And that's how it works for real estate investors who need to raise capital. The higher, uh, uh, the greater your visibility online, on social media, on podcasts, or, or through paid advertising, or however you do it, the more chance you have of attracting people to you who will invest with you. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today on Raising Private Money, he builds digital marketing systems for real estate professionals who want to raise equity capital online. You know, that's also known as crowdfunding. Now, his clients have raised in excess of a billion dollars for real estate using his systems. In addition to that, my guest today has taught over 4,800 individuals on how to build wealth, how to preserve capital, and how to earn passive income from investing in real estate. Now, he is the country's foremost expert in investing in discounted, distressed commercial real estate. Now, combining decades-long experience in real estate investment and finance with his industry-leading digital marketing expertise, he provides developers as well with the tools they need to raise unlimited capital online for their real estate deals. My guest is the most sought after real estate crowdfunding expert in the world today. Put your seatbelt on because in just a moment, you're going to meet my very, very special guest, Dr. Adam Gower, right after this. <laughs> Dr. Gower, welcome to the show. Jay, it's an enormous pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me today. Absolutely. I feel as though with your accent, I should address you as your majesty, but <laughs> I'll, I'll try to refrain from that. So it's so exciting to have you here, uh, Dr. Gower, on raising private money. Mm. I mean, let's stop and think about it for a second. You're the world's foremost expert on crowdfunding, using online systems to attract private money. And I'm the guy known for teaching real estate investors, single family house investors, commercial investors, how to raise private money as well. But my expertise is not in syndication. My expertise is in what we call one-offs. And when we say one-offs, of course, we're talking about you've raised private money and now that private lender is loaning money on that particular deal and isn't like necessarily investing in a fund. So first of all, let's make sure that our listeners know exactly what we're talking about. So we've got two different audiences here. Part of our audience, Dr. Gower, are real estate investors looking to raise capital for their real estate deals. And we have another percentage of our audience that are individuals that would love to be private lenders. So first of all, in your world of being an expert in crowdfunding, and I initially have two questions for you. First sure. of all, what qualifies you to be an expert in crowdfunding? But first of all, explain to all of us, what do we mean by crowdfunding and what is it? Okay, gosh. Uh, so, so good questions both. Uh, I'll start with your second question first. Uh, so, uh, um, crowdfunding is the uh, the process of uh, raising capital uh, from m more than just yourself, right? So, if you've got a deal that you want to raise capital for, uh, and uh, uh, you don't, and I'm sorry, if you've got a deal and you don't have enough capital. Uh, to finance it yourself, then uh, you have to raise money from other people. And that really is nothing more than crowdfunding. You use the word syndicating. That's all you're doing is syndicating your deal to more than one person. As soon as you do that, you're, you're syndicating your deal. That is 
essentially crowdfunding. Now, there are some um, misunderstandings about the term crowdfunding. Technically, crowdfunding comes out of what's called Regulation CF for crowdfunding. It was part of the Jobs Act of 2012. Uh, that is a minuscule uh, part of uh, the uh, of what real estate syndication is or online syndication uh, and the amount of money that is raised for real estate it really pales into insignificance when compared with another regulation, which was Regulation uh, fi uh, Reg D 506 C. And what Reg D 506 C did was it allowed you to raise money from anybody, anywhere at any time. In other words, it allowed you to advertise. And as soon as you can advertise to raise money, basically you're crowdfunding, even though technically that might not be exactly the right term for it. Very good. So what got you qualified to be such an expert in this arena? Yes. What a qualification. Oh my goodness. What does qualify me? Well, uh, so when the laws, well, first of all, I have a PhD in, uh, in, in how banks syndicated, uh, the financing of, uh, the railroads, basically the financing of, of uh, American industry in the late 19th century, early 20th century. So, so let's just start with that. Syndication and crowdfunding actually is nothing new. America was built on it, right? So that's a starting point. In 2012, when the Jobs Act passed, it opened up syndication again, or online uh, online syndication. It opened up crowdfunding to real estate for the first time since 1933. And I won't get into too much detail. Jay, I don't want to bore you with too much history. But 1933, after the Great Depression, uh, Congress shut down, essentially shut down crowdfunding. Uh, or syndication from people that you don't already know. And in 2012, it opened it up again. And I was doing some seed and angel investing. I'd done very well during the global financial crisis when prices collapsed uh, 2007 plus uh, and was doing some investing in small startup companies uh, when the Jobs Act was passed. And when the Jobs Act was passed, I realized that there was an overlap between digital marketing for the first time. There was an overlap between digital marketing and capital formation for real estate. So I started interviewing uh, members of Congress, uh, people in the White House, lobbyists, and early adopters of what we are using, uh, what we're calling crowdfunding, to learn what they were doing. What, you know, like, where did it come from? How did it start? And what was the motivation for it? Uh, and so I started to track all of the top websites, uh, CrowdStreet, RealCrowd, Realty Mogul, and others, uh, having gotten to know uh, their founders uh, after the Jobs Act was passed. And we started to uh, re essentially reverse engineer their best practices, bring them in-house and start applying those best practices to sponsors or to people that wanted to raise money online. And that's how we got to the sharp edge of the industry, uh, by uh, learning from how others were adapting to this new environment, this new opportunity to raise money online, and then improving the systems that we saw them developing uh, to, uh, to apply those to our own clients. Gotcha. So you really dove deep into this. So mm -hmm. what are the benefits to using a crowdfunding platform for, you know, the majority of your clients, which are in uh, real estate investors wanting to raise money? Why crowdfunding? I'm sure the list is long. Uh, yes, it is, actually. Um, so there are numerous reasons. And first of all, uh, although a lot of our clients do use some of the major platforms, what we do is we build platforms for our clients. So we build crowdfunding platforms for them so they can raise money directly. They, they, when you go to one of the big platforms like CrowdStreet or Realty Mogul, uh, you are at essentially the, M it's like the MLS of uh, commercial real estate capital formation, right? You go there and you can see a dozen 
different deal. So you're on a shelf uh, with other opportunities that investors can come and take a look at. What we do is we build uh, platforms or websites for our clients so that they are the uh, only their deals are on offer, right? So these are bespoke, tailored uh, websites and systems for our clients to raise money directly. Now, there are all kinds of advantages. Uh, first of all, you can raise a lot more money, uh, <laughs> right? That's kind of the number one. Uh, you, can, uh, you can reach out to people that you don't know uh, and attract them to your offerings and raise capital that way. And if you're doing that, really all you're doing is leveraging the internet, right? I mean, the power of the internet to raise capital. Think about what you and I are doing right now, Jay. I mean, we're on the internet, right? YouTube and, you know, whatever uh, platform, StreamYard over here to, you know, to do the broadcasting. It's going to be on LinkedIn and on Twitter. It'll be in my email, be in your email, et cetera, et cetera. We are leveraging digital resources to uh, project our message out into the world. And when you do that, what you do is you attract people you don't even know. And that's how it works for real estate investors who need to raise capital. The higher, uh, uh, the greater your visibility online, on social media, on podcasts, or, or through paid advertising, or however you do it, the more chance you have of attracting people to you who will invest with you. Uh, and that is, and I forgot your question. <laughs> well, the advantages, the, the advantages of using a crowdfunding oh, platform versus, you know, other ways of raising private money. Well, look, you know, it, 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 I've raised, personally, I've raised over half a billion in equity throughout the course of my career. And the way that I did that, the way that it was always done, Jay, I mean, you've got a few gray hairs as well. You, like, you've been around before 2012 in this business. So the way that it used to be done, was you would have to, I mean, cliche though it is, you would have to join a country club. Uh, you would join a foundation, you get on a board, you go to conferences, and I haven't even got any in front of me now. You'd exchange business cards, you'd meet people in person. And then you'd go back to your office with a stack of business cards and you'd start making phone calls, or you might send a letter, oh my goodness, or a fax, or you know, you you'd give them a, a Whatever it was, right? You, you would follow up in person. Now, the laws required that that's how you did it. You first had to establish a relationship before you could say to somebody, hey, do you want to invest in my deal? It was all done in person. So, and it was done successfully, but it was very, very inefficient way of raising capital. When the laws were deregulated, when what's called solicitation was deregulated in 2012, it suddenly allowed you to advertise. Oh, my goodness. Now you can go online. So what it does for you, it doesn't eliminate the need to spend time and effort on raising money. You still have to work at it. All the tactics and techniques and uh, advice that you provide uh, you know, your students is, is uh, completely valid. You still have to work at it. There's no shortcut. The difference is when you're doing it online is you are leveraging the internet and making the time you spend that much more efficient and effective. Instead of talking to one person at a time, like, you know, on your show, instead of just talking to me, you're talking to thousands, tens of thousands of people all at the same time. That's the fundamental difference. I love it. I absolutely love this. So I want to drill down with you, uh, Dr. Gower on the process and how this works. So first of all, uh, your company uh, builds the platform for your client. So uh, when we say the platform, am I correct in assuming that you're actually, your company is actually building a website for your client, uh, clients that want to raise money, right? Correct, yes. It's a okay. lead so generation they, website, yeah. Got the website. So here's my first question from a, I mean, I'm a marketer. Right. I love I love marketing. Right. And and so um, that's why it's so easy for me to attract a lot of private money, I suppose. But anyway, my first question is, OK, you got a website. Now, we all know 
You can have the best website in the world, but if nobody sees it, it doesn't do any good, right? right. So uh, how does your client's website, how do other people get to find the website and actually see what's on the website? Okay, you asked, you nailed it. So, so much on the head there, Jane. You keep disappearing from my screen. I'm not sure. I do like to see you. Uh, somebody <laughs> behind the scenes is uh, is doing that. Yeah, I, I do like to see your reaction. Uh, it makes me think I'm, you know, I'm afraid you might have left. <laughs> I <laughs> promise there, not and to leave you, Dr. Gower. I and I'm just talking to, to myself. Anyway, it is good to see your face. Thank you for, for coming back. Um, all right. So, yes, you're absolutely right. I mean, you absolutely nailed it. If you build a beautiful website that has, uh, you know, all of all the components that you need to have on it, you've got to have educational content, you have lead generation forms, there's some technical search engine optimization stuff. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into a website. Even then, if if you don't drive, it's called driving traffic. If you don't drive traffic to your website, it's invisible. So the way that we do it is we take all the, first thing we do is we create massive content. You've got to have content. Like you've written books. You've got to have content. You've got to have books. You have articles, opinion pieces, videos. It's a lot of work, right? But the nice thing, by the way, is that once you've done it, you actually, you only have to do it once. Once you build it, it becomes an asset to you and it just keeps on, it's like a flywheel. It just keeps on running in the background. So once you've built your website and it's replete with all the content that you have, articles, blogs, videos, et cetera, books, et cetera, what we do then is we fragment all that content. So we take small bits of all of that content and we auto post that to social media. So it automatically is posted. And at the moment, I think I'm posting fewer than five or six times a day. At my peak, I'm maybe 12 times a day on uh, all social media channels, channels that matter. Uh, and so what that does is it starts to elevate your visibility. And by the way, key pro tip here, whenever you do that, whenever you post on social media, whether you're doing it automatic or auto posting or manually, always leave a way for somebody to follow up with you, right? So there has to be what's called a CTA, a call to action. So all of these posts that we put out there might say, uh, you know, learn learn how to uh, raise money from private investors, all right, or private money, private money. Click here to learn more. And that click here button redirects somebody to your website where, where prospects can come to get to, and the three pillars, as you know, of effective digital marketing, where your prospects can come to know, like, and trust you all on their own without any direct contact with you. Isn't that an amazing thing? You don't have to use this device, a phone to speak to anybody. You don't have to email with them, do Zoom calls. They, if you've done it right, they will find you on social media from your automated posts or paid advertising, for example. Navigate to your website, look at your, look at your podcast, look at your videos, read your book. And they will become predisposed to doing business with you. But the first point of contact that you will actually have with them, they will already be sold. All they will want at that point of contact is to be converted. They just want you to take their money at that point, really. They're, they're sold. So that's how it works. Uh, I love that. Now, you mentioned... Um, paid ads. Uh, you mentioned your social media. So are your clients using both or are they primarily using one? Are they using just organic social posts on their own social platforms or are they also using paid Facebook ads or all the above? Yeah. Okay. So or uh, pay per click or pay per click. So one of the, uh, one of the big advantages I've found of having a podcast is that when I don't know something, right? If, I, if I'm kind of struggling uh, over a concept of some sort, I'll give you a good example. DSTs, I think Delaware Statutory Trust. I still don't really understand what they are. I invited someone on my podcast to explain it, right? 
Uh, and so, uh, do hey, look, feel- that's another advantage of being a host of a podcast. You actually get to meet some pretty smart people and learn some stuff yourself. Right? That's all I do. The only reason I have people on my show is so that I can learn what they're doing. Be surprised. So please don't hesitate. Ask me anything. Really, I really mean that. So what we've found uh, is, first of all, the way that I like to describe it, Jay, is that when you've built one of these machines like we built, it's like, and you turn the machine on. It's like uh, cruising down the street in a in a beautiful car with a big engine, uh, with a gas uh, a tank full of gas, uh, and a, and a great looking body, right? The people are looking at. But you've not got your foot on the gas, but you're in drive. So all you're doing is you're just kind of slowly cruising down the street. So that's what happens when you build one of these systems. You start to get a drip. Of, uh, of of prospects coming in. Now what you need to do, to answer your question, is you've got to put your foot on the gas. And the way you put your foot on the gas in digital marketing is, and this is what we have found works particularly well, paid ads, Facebook is a, is a very good resource mm-hmm. uh, to, uh, to generate prospects and to, to, uh, to build your business. Uh, Google, Google is also good when you start using keywords. Mm-hmm. A lot harder uh, with Google, but what we've found is that Google generally generates a uh, uh, a higher quality of prospect, a prospect who is more likely to convert. Again, we're in a yeah we're in the we're in the world of of raising you know hundreds of millions of dollars, so we're looking for you know high ticket uh, prospects. Uh, so Google works well. Uh, and and well, not to interrupt you, Dr. Gower, but what well, I love about Google, and I use both in my businesses, mm-hmm. like I have multiple businesses, real estate investing business, coaching business. I use Facebook ads and Google on in all of those businesses. Mm-hmm. What I love about pay-per-click or pay-per-lead, mm-hmm. the difference between pay-per-click and pay-per-lead for our listener, of course, is pay-per-click, you're doing it yourself. Pay-per-lead, you're, you're paying a company to do the pay-per-click so you get the lead. But what I love about Google is those prospects are looking for you. That's They're exactly looking right. for you. Yeah. It's the, so the difference is, uh, the difference that you have just uh, described uh, is uh, what I call the moment of maximum intent. So w- with Facebook, what people are doing, they're on their phone and, uh, you know, they're, they're scanning for uh, funny cat videos. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Or they're looking at gossip from their friends. Right. So when you advertise on Facebook, you've really got to break their concentration and distract them from mm-hmm. what they're actually doing, which is entertaining themselves. With Google, what you're doing is you're is you are showing up when somebody says, how do I invest in real estate? That is the moment of maximum intent. So when mm-hmm. you show up, when somebody runs the search like that, they're they're much more inclined to convert, meaning to do what it is ultimately that you want them to do, uh, either buy a course or invest in a deal or whatever it is, they're more inclined to do that. However, cost per lead on mm-hmm. Google is significantly higher. Oh, yeah. My, co- my cost on Google is about four times more to get a lead on mm-hmm. Google than it is on Facebook. But as you say, it's a higher quality lead. They're looking yeah. for you. That's right. The conversion rate is much higher. You're right. So uh, those are about the same stats that we have, actually. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn is even more expensive. Uh, LinkedIn, we find, can be, uh, gosh, eight to ten times as much to get a lead as it is on Facebook. Um, But the quality of the leads are also significantly better. So uh, you've got to look at the entire, the economics of your entire funnel's uh, to really know what's doing the best for you. Uh, right. So you down. All right. So now myself and my audience really wants to get a big gold nugget right now. So mm-hmm. here's the gold nugget question. Okay. The, the lead comes in. Mm-hmm. Lead comes in. Now, what do you do with the lead? Okay, so uh, that's, a, that's again, uh, so just to contextualize what we do, we are looking for people to invest in syndication. So we're looking at minimum to bring in leads who are willing to, re- to invest 25000 and up, 
right in a specific way. Well, well, guess what? That's a perfect fit for my audience because our minimum investment that we accept from people mm. is typically either twenty five thousand or thirty thousand. All right. So what we have found uh, works the best, and it, you know, it really depends on uh, on who you are and your preferred way of doing business. I never try to uh, force any of our clients to do anything that is not not uh, that that doesn't dovetail with how they work and how they work the best. So I'll give you a couple of examples. We have some clients who will nurture their prospects. So a lead comes in. In other words, a lead has filled out a form, mm -hmm. said, here's my name, here's my email address, probably said, here's my phone number, and then said something else about themselves. Maybe I'm an accredited investor, All right? So let's consider that a, a lead. So some of our clients will then trigger uh, an automated a, um, welcome sequence or indoctrination mm -hmm. sequence of emails, mm -hmm. and they will only communicate by email. So that sequence of email uh, of emails might include: here's an intro video, here's a little, you know, here's the hardest lesson we learned, paper, or you know, it's got a sequence of things that allows your prospect to come to know, like, and trust you to get to know you better. Mm -hmm. And then once that initial sequence is over, you then switch to a nurturing sequence. Mm -hmm. Depending on where you are in your in your deal cycle, if you've got a deal, a live deal, you want to introduce them to that. Send them a link to a webinar, invite them to a webinar. You want to be hitting them regularly uh, with uh, options to engage with you and to learn more. That's some clients like to do that strictly email only. Mm -hmm. Then we have clients who like to make phone calls. Oh my goodness, that I don't like to do. <laughs> but some of our clients love. But my lens, Dr. Gower, you should because when they hear your voice, you've got them captivated. Oh my goodness! I know. So we just spend on the blooming phone all the time. I even I switch my phone off during the day. I can't, it's it's too distracting. Anyway, that, but that's me. If you like to use the phone, then the cli the clients that we have sometimes we we will set clients up with uh, a a a call setter. So somebody submits a form on Facebook, they will get a phone call within 30 seconds of wow. having submitted that call. And that phone call will be from a setter. And the setter will say, hey, thanks so much for your interest in our deal at the corner of Walk and Crosswalk. Can I connect you with one of our investor relations uh, professionals? And mm -hmm. then they will either patch them through straight away, that's called a warm lead transfer, mm -hmm. or they will set up a time to have a call with one of those investor relations people later. So that is a process of making phone calls. That's where you follow up with phone calls. What I will tell you is that, unfortunately for guys like me who don't like being on the phone, phone calls are the best way to convert people, unfortunately. <laughs> you gotta get on the phone. I'm serious, you gotta get sure. on the phone. However, well, you know, I, go ahead. I was going to say, you may find this hard to believe, Dr. Gower, but here in eastern North Carolina, we actually still have handsets <laughs> with with cords attached to handsets. You don't handsets. have to wind it up, do you, as well? Yeah, and you know, it's like so many of my uh, listeners and my audience uh, mm -hmm. and my followers, they don't even know what a handset is. But anyway, uh, I call this I call this device an ATM machine. So the more time uh, myself or any one of my team is on this device, the more money we make. Yeah, <laughs> you are 100% right. If you get on the phone, uh, it's, you know, when we scale clients, what they do when they re when we're really scaling and we're looking at pulling in 10, 20 leads a day, and it's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of traffic when it's all accredited investors. Uh, and they're trying to keep track of that. Um, the only way to do it is is with uh, with phone calls. It's just the only way. However, I, let me just give you some stats, some of our stats. I, I'd be interested in yours. Uh, we find that uh, the number of people who actually pick up, so we did a campaign recently, uh, last year, actually. Uh, cap, we've, uh, there were 10,000 leads uh, generated in three months. That's a lot of leads, 450,000 in ad spend. Mm. Uh, so ten thousand leads, twelve percent picked up on the on the on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, Four percent booked a call, 
and 2% invested. So think about that. That means, this is what my wife says is my, my superpower. My superpower is the ability to hear no 100 times before getting one yes, but not being phased by that. Those oh, my land. Do you know one of my favorite books? What's I was going to see if it's nearby. Anyway, it's nearby, but I, I don't want to waste time. My One of my favorite books is, and it's thin. I mean, people can read it literally in one sitting. The Power of No. In fact, it's called Go for No. Go for No is the name of it. But you know what, uh, Dr. Gower? If you're getting two or three conversions out of 100 leads, that's phenomenal. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, again, it's how we build businesses. I mean, the nice thing is that those 98 people that say no or aren't real in the first place, they still drop into your uh, into your lead gen uh, funnel, right? They're, they're part of your ecosystem now. And so as long as you continue to nurture them over time, eventually they convert. You, you just keep working those additional ones, your list builds, and eventually... Uh, th uh, they will convert. I mean, it's oh yeah. I mean, you know, a no, to, a no today can many times be a yes in three months, four months, six months, or even a year down yeah, the road. Absolutely. You are so right. Yeah, we've even got one client. I want the first thing I wanted to do was to actually one of the first ways I really learned this. The client came to us. There, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand people on their list, and I said, well, how, how, uh, like, where did they come from? He said, well, I've known these people for you know for years and years and years. He said. So, so listen, we need to purge this list to increase your open rates because their open rates were very low. He said, absolutely not. He said, we occasionally, I'll get, we'll get somebody who has been getting my emails. For, he said, recently just happened. For the last four years, they've been getting my emails. And suddenly, out of nowhere, he signs a check for 250000 Like, there's no way he said I'm purging my list. Absolutely. I mean, why would you purge your list anyway, for goodness sakes? Well, and I know some people talk about, oh, you don't want to hurt your open rate and all that kind of stuff. But you never know who's going to who's going to open it. Dr. Gower, cool. I got a couple more very important questions, but we got some folks that might need to jump off. And I don't want them to jump off until they hear how they can connect with you and your team and help them raise a lot of money uh, and syndication for their deals. Thank you, Jay. So the best way to find me actually is at gowercrowd.com, G-O-W-E-R. <laughs> it's flashed up on the screen. Thank you. Gowercrowd.com. That is my last name, Gower Crowd. And uh, I have a newsletter. It's a free newsletter. It goes out every Wednesday. It covers the whole world of real estate syndication and crowdfunding. And we are totally focused at the moment on uh, discounted distress deals, how to find them, how to invest in them. And actually, uh, for those who are struggling, how to structure capital calls. That's getting into a little bit more detail. Capital calls and rescue capital. So uh, in this, in these tough times, it's a, it's a really good resource. All that at GowerCrowd.com. Awesome. So be sure and check out www.GowerCrowd, G-O-W-E-R, Crowd. Just like our crowd, C R O W D dot com, GowerCrowd dot com. So, one last question before I let you go, uh, Dr. Gower. What about um, security concerns, uh, or what about the um, you know SEC concerns? How uh, since you know we can legally openly solicit, but of course uh, there we can openly solicit unless we follow the rules, of course. And so, um, how how do you help ensure your clients? that they are SEC compliant uh, with their website out there? Right. I have a rule for that. I'm glad you asked. My rule is the AAA rule. And anything to do with uh, legal questions like that, the AAA rule kicks in. Ask an attorney. That's Amen. My, Amen. That's Amen. it. Yeah. End of story. I, I don't give legal advice. You know, I, I, I tell, and I tell people all the time, I'm not an attorney. I never played an attorney on television. Uh, I can teach you what has worked for me and how I have been successful, but you always need to do your own due diligence. Absolutely. Dr. Gower, what a pleasure. What a blessing to have you here on the show. And I tell you what, you are the first guest and we have over 600 episodes now on raising private money, but you're the first guest that's been an expert on crowdfunding and what a fantastic 
show and guest uh, you have been. You're very, very kind, Jay. Thank you so much for having me on today. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.